sir, the genius who invented the six-day bike race must have had an egg beater for a break. Be simple. Find two dozen gyromaniacs, put them on hopped-up bikes, pair them off in teams, and turn them loose on a wooden saucer. These boys have been at it since the day before yesterday. They've got two and a half more days to go before this grueling, grinding handlebar derby goes into the record book of sport. You know, of course, that while one man rides, his teammate rests. In other words, they take turns on the track until at the end of six days, the winning team will have covered over 2,500 miles. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? The combined mileage of all the teams will equal, now get this, the distance around the world. And there are teams here from all around the world. France, Norway, the Netherlands, Finland, two teams from Finland, Mexico, England, and of course the USA. The Dutchmen are leading, but it's still anybody's race. It's now 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and there's $10,000 for the team that's covered the most ground by Saturday night. you so soon. So I see, Dan. You and Mr. Barron here have met before, haven't you? Hello, Barnett. Never socially. We've almost met professionally once or twice. That bad man out there belong to you? His name's Bluey. Brought him in from Vegas. He's recommended. With me, he'll go places. If he doesn't take his pop gun back to the toy shop, I know one place he's going. What I interrupt, Dan? I, I was having a private talk with Dan here. Isn't that right, Dan? We were talking about you, Barnett. Hardly, anyway. That's why I asked him to invite you over. Well, I gotta go now. He'll tell you all about it, won't you, Dan? Yeah, I'll tell him. Oh, uh, don't worry about busting in, Barnett. Dan and I can finish our private talk where we left off any time. I'm uh, glad you got here early, Mike. I'd have had a few more lumps. I thought so. What that? Don't, Mike. Please. All right, why was he working you over? Just a warning, he says, to make sure I keep in line. Is that tin horn cutting himself in on your promotion? The Baron is after bigger buck than this. He's fallen to say to get through the mob on the West Coast. They've bet more money on this race than they've actually got. Plunging, huh? Which team are they on? The Dutchman. something funny? It's a reverse fix. What's that? The Dutchmen are leading the field by 10 laps. Mr. Barron says the Dutchmen are winning. I've got to see that they keep on winning. And I've got to see, <laughs> get this, keep the race honest. Barron, he's strictly a cold deck artist. He wouldn't bet on a tiddlywink game unless he could load the tiddlies. He walked in here and threatened to cripple me if anybody put a fix on the race. Made me hire you to see if it was on the level. Which means if the Dutchmen lose, He's widening the gap, and the sprint is over. 
Billy Trump, the flying Dutchman, took that sprint with riding the like of which hasn't been seen around here since the days of Reggie McNamara. If both Dutchmen ride like that one, you got nothing to worry about. No, no. There are two riders on that track who can beat the Dutchman. Well, who are they? The Pinay brothers, freshmen. They took the race last year, set the world's record. Nobody can beat them. Well, somebody is. Well, that's because they're not riding as a team this year. They each have a new partner. They're way back in the pack, thank heaven. Well, then what are you worried about? Well, there's still four days left, and the Pinay brothers could still join up. Not unless both their partners drop out. You've seen these races. The crashes, the breakneck sprints. There'll be plenty of injuries. The teams are always getting split up. The rule gives the man who is left four hours in which to team up with another rider who is in the same fix. Sure, but aren't the odds kind of long that both the Panays would lose their partners within the four-hour limit? Long odds is not what Baron is betting on. He's only interested in the sure thing. Hey, somebody's riding for a fall. The way the team's stacked up now in the third day of the race, it's still Trump and Vandermonders riding under the flag of the... Wait a minute, it looks like somebody's riding in a trouble. Stop it. Crazy kid. And you often see that kind of riding here at the Army. It looks like young Devlin. That's who it is, Devlin, all right. The I don't care kid from the Navy Yard District of Brooklyn. Not exactly reckless, you understand, but there's no question about it. He is in trouble. He hit that last turn too fast and too low. He's out of control. Oh, oh bless you. He's, he's back in the race. Mike? That's what I'm worried about. It was the partner of Gene Penney. lost your partner that time, eh? Uh, myself. This Devlin fella is one crazy man. <laughs> Everything for a joke. Like yesterday, the hundred dollar sprint, he is way ahead. And what does he do? He rides side saddle. What? Huh? He's American. So? Blame yourself, Jean. It was your idea to break up the Pinay. Uh, we... Brother ride against brother, huh? You were going to prove that Jean could win without Marcel. So, what happened, huh? Oh, yes, we win once in a while a few tries in the spins. But the Islanders are winning the $10,000 because you had to team up with a uh, hot rod, huh? And you did better. Now, Big Cloud, huh? an old man who can run faster than he can ride and pedals as if he were on a sewing machine. Here comes the old man off the track now. But why he do that? He just got out. Maybe caught his long white beard in the sewing machine, huh? Hey, no beard. Where are you treat, eh? Sorry, chum. I got me a ready chariot. Take two laps, will you? That's a good lad. Exactly. Ah, in the old crochet. Uh. Oh, come on, Eddie. You're rubbing me blinking skin off. Quit crying. Your calf muscles are tighter than banjo strings. But that's dirt burn. What do you do for the chalios? Cauterize it? Just relax. You got so much rubbing alcohol inside of your skin, you don't know what it feels like on the outside. Hey, Mac, who's new with this? Bobby Clark's wife. You think an overhaul? Nah, just a quick check. He's back on the track in a second. Not on this bike, he isn't. Who says so? There you are. 
on, Hobby. A little olive oil to take the sting out and loosen up the old muscles. Where's Tabasco sauce? Then olive oil. So true. I think you're mixing a salad. <laughs> you're not doing so good out there, Nobby. What's the matter? Legs giving out? Look here, my lad. This race has just started. I ain't got my second win yet. Take my advice and put your money on Frenchie and me. Uh-uh. My dough's on the Dutchman. Of course, they're the favorites, and you don't get well bet in favorites. Now, if Pinney were riding with his brother, that would Well, be... he ain't say. Let him in, Billy. Where's my bike? Me and him's gonna win this race yet, you'll see. <laughs> You're now. That ain't mine. Talk to him about it. Sorry, Mr. Clark. I'm having your bike inspected. This one's been checked. That's nice. Who are you? My name's Mike Barnett. I'm a friend of Mr. Flynn's. He's hiring me to prevent accidents. You're a friend of Dan's, you're a friend of mine. Well, lots of riders would be afraid of a jinx. Changing bikes like this. Superstitious, Clark? Oh, me? I was born on a blasted Friday, the Bleeding 13. It would take any ruddy velocity that's made right through the Lombard here. <laughs> Good luck. Things have slowed down a bit now while the riders get their wind out of that last sprint. These boys are rugged, all right, but even they have to take it easy once in a while. I hope the old one can hold it. Say, Eddie, get back this so fix him up. Yeah, sure. Anybody seen what I did with my rubbing alcohol? So you're looking for a pally? Yeah, thanks. Where'd you find it? On the table, right where you left it. Gee, I thought the bottle I was using was half empty. What are you doing here, Bluey? Same thing you are, shoe fly. Working for Mr. Barrett. I'm going to be working for Mr. Barron, but I'm working for Mr. Flynn. Part of my job is to keep the infield clean, so get moving. Huh, we're on your side. Anything happens to you, we're right behind you. Make you feel good? I feel better when you're in front of me. <laughs> well, there you are. No gimmicks, no gas. Just the way we want the ring. Nothing should happen to Devil or Clark so the Frenchmen don't team up. The Dutchman win. That's all we ask. Now, there's a switch. Don't you feel a little uncomfortable being so legitimate? <laughs> the Dutchmen are favored, three to one. What's so uncomfortable about them odds? Well, don't forget. Anything you need, just like they say, send up a flare. I'll be in real trouble when I send for you. Look, squeaky shoes. I talk nice to you all the same back for me. Friend's office. Dan, did you see it? Yes. Who was it, Mike? Devlin, Gene Benet's partner. I don't think seriously. Doctor? Bad news, Dan. Broke an ankle. Must have been doing 15. He blew a tire. Mike, it sounds like a terrible thing. The poor lad hurt and all. But I know that Gene Pinay won't team up with anyone until he's sure that his brother won't be free. It's just... I know, Dan, but I can't protect Clark while he's riding, only when he's in the pit. Just don't worry, Dan. 
but I am worrying, Mike. Tell Barnett he'd better start worrying, too. broken. Mr. Barnett, there wasn't nothing wrong with that wheel. You was here when I checked it. Yeah, it wasn't the wheel. It's a heart attack, I guess. Well, Mobby should have been off the track years ago. But they always called him the Iron Man. Any team he was on averaged 400 miles a day. Yeah, dead man's heart always stops. But what stopped it? I don't get you. Where do you keep your acid? What acid? We ain't got no acid. What's that? Oh, that's, that's rust remover. It's also stereotic acid. Yeah, we keep it to shine up the bright stuff, like chrome and stuff like that. All right. Beat it. You know what happened? I do. I said beat it. Mike, I've known Nobby Clark for over 30 years. I just Where's Baron? Baron? Oh, that figure's on my phone trying to lay off some of his bets. You know what I'm going to do, Mike? I'm going to see that the Pinay brothers do team up. Baron wanted an honest race. I'll give him one. Did he want an honest race? Well, you bet a fortune on the Dutchman. To win or lose? You, you mean those weren't accidents? This is stereotic acid, a slow corrosive. One drop of this in one of those silk tires and it'll blow up inside a minute. Devlin was a reckless rider, no questions. But what about Funobi? You see this? It's cork lined because if it wasn't the acid, it'd eat right through the glass. See this piece of bottle? It's frosted etched on the surface from whatever was inside it. Well, what was in it? Rubbing alcohol on this. I saw Bluey empty something down that drain. He must have broken the bottle afterwards. Rubbing alcohol? Then murder. Rubbed on a large surface of the skin that had penetrated his pores, enough to make him dizzy, lose his sense of balance. He's an old man, no questions. <laughs> but can you prove it, Mike? No, but the medical examiner and the police can. We'd better corral the witnesses before Bowie does. Yeah. Call J.J. in Vegas and the man downtown like I told you. How much did you lay off? We called him, boss, but don't look too good. Hmm. Downtown won't take a nickel, and the other guy wants to wait to see what he gets on the wire. Doesn't look too good, huh? I'm afraid not, boss. The, uh, the Frenchies team up yet? No, not yet. They will, Louie. Uh, I guess they will, huh? 
Well, who do you want me to call now? Uh, isn't there a guy up in Montreal? No. There is something you can do for me, Louie. Oh, sure, what? Put your gun on the desk. Well, I don't get you, Mr. Barron. You did get me, you crummy little punk. Now, give me that gun. Well, Mr. Barron, I'll, I'll pay you back, honest. Pay me what? The grand I gave you to bet yourself on the Dutchman? Or the 300 grand I'm dropping because you bet it the other way and then went out to make a killing for yourself? How'd you know? I know because Barnett knows. And he figured out enough to send you to the chair. He won't turn me in, will you, Mr. Barron? No, you know too much, you slimy little worm. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna take a ride down to the river. Both of us. Only I'm coming back. Oh, look, Mr. Barron, you... You've gotta give me a break. Give you a break? Because I'm blasting out. Still playing a big shot, aren't you? Keep your hands down. You ain't healed. What's in that pocket? Evidence. Against me? What is it? Haul it out. Recognize it, Bluey? It's a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a lot of acid. I mixed it the same way you did to show to the police. You ain't showing nothing. Give it here. Pull that trigger and you'll get this in the face. Hey, drop that stuff. Drop that pistol or I'll splash this in your eyes. You kidding? Drop it or I'll blast you. I couldn't miss, even if you shot me. You're bluffing. Am I? I'll count to three. One. Hey, stand back. Two. Okay. Drop it. Okay, Seamus. You win. There's no acid in that bottle. It's nothing but rubbing alcohol. Your face isn't burning. It's just your imagination. But don't worry. Where you're going, you'll burn all over. Give me the police department. 